will just get you engaged. So hopefully you are seeing my screen. And um, what I'm gonna do is actually just show you the agenda real quickly. Um, I'm using the, uh, I keep saying, uh, sorry, it's been a long day here. I'm using a design lesson principle with the ease based on let's go ahead and just get engaged. Let's explore it like a student and then let's go and explain the details and build it. And then at the end, that evaluate piece, let's look at how we get the data. So this is just to give you an overview of how this is laid out. And then the next thing I want to take care of before we get started, uh, and I'm not doing the present right now because I want to show you the whole presenting with Pear Deck. But this is a tip from a teacher, actually AC Reynolds High. Um, we were, I was in Beth Love's class while she was actually doing a Pear Deck and she had the students looking at a piece of text on the left side and on the right side was the Pear Deck presentation that she, the students then were putting their answers in. And in this scenario, she had them minimize the Zoom. So just kind of think about this as we're moving along. Part of what you can do today is practice being that student so that when you're asking them or advising them about how to see it better on their screen or interact, then you've had that experience. Yeah. So what you can do to split your screen, and today, instead of us having a text on this side, you might have your Zoom open where I'm sharing my screen. You'll see my screen as a teacher view, which is what I usually do with this when we're in front of each other. So you can look up and see my screen on the board, and then you can also see the student experience on your device. So again, this is just a tip if you wanna try that. You hit the Windows key, and at the same time, then hit a right arrow. It'll put one of your screens on one side, and then you'll get to choose what other screen you want to go on the left. So in a few minutes when we get started, feel free to practice that, raise your hand, put questions in the chat. All right, so the first thing is, while you're watching my screen, I'm on a Google slide, and we're gonna start off with basics, and then we'll go to some more advanced, but I'm in a Google slide. This is why Pear Deck is so convenient. I get the add-on. So watch where I'm clicking. If you don't have this, you haven't done that, then Pear Deck has got add-ons where you can go grab it. And once you have it, it's actually kind of put itself primary right here on my toolbar. So once I've got that add-on and I click Pear Deck, on the right side of my screen, underneath the present, if I were to hit present, it would just be just like a Google slide. So I need to hit start the lesson with the Pear Deck. So I'm gonna start that lesson. Pear Deck has some changes. So it's kind of good if you haven't been in it for a while and you're like, okay, I just need to come and get a refresher because I'm going to start this with my kids soon. You can see what's new. So I'm actually going to do the instructor pace right now. They've added a quick, easy way to turn on the student pace because of remote learning. It used to just be under the three dots in the bottom right, but I'm going to start with instructor pace activity. And now I'm sharing my presentation in my Zoom with you so you can see the teacher part of it. And then I'm gonna ask you to open a new tab in your browser. So if your Zoom is on full screen, in the top right, there's a square which just has the corners. You can hover over that and exit full screen. You may also be able to, at the bottom, just click on Chrome and open up Chrome. That's the browser that uh, we use the most with Pear Deck. I'm going to click start a new session for me, but for you, you're now opening up a separate tab. And again, if you want to practice the Windows key with the arrow to kind of split your screen, you can do that. And Pam, I often just drag the, um, grab the top bar and drag it to either the left or the right. So if they're not familiar with the Windows left or right, I drag. Okay, perfect. And again, this is a good time for you to play around with that and even give us some mm -hmm. feedback in just a minute and go, hey, I've got the perfect solution and I need to let everybody know. So <laughs> that would work too. Okay, so it is gonna pull up the screen to the right. This is something else that's new. The teacher dashboard in the past, you had to actually go turn on a teacher dashboard. So you actually have two screens. I have my presentation screen, the one in the back that has the join code. And then I've got this dashboard and the teacher dashboard allows you to see who is adding content, like who said what. It's an excellent tool for remote learning. The teacher that I mentioned, Miss um, Love, she had a, a difficult topic 
one that was hard for people to maybe want to speak up in front of everybody in a Zoom and have a voice, or one that might get a lot of, um, I don't know, feedback in a live Zoom with voice. So the Pear Deck allowed her to have everyone respond and then kind of choose some of those responses to show and to have conversation about, but everyone still got to respond. So in a hard topic, in any topic, giving student voice is a key to Pear Deck. Um, I'm gonna also just pull this and now that I have this dashboard, now we'll put, say one more thing about the dashboard. If you have a separate device, that makes it so easy. So you'll see sometimes where under the three dots, like if you were to go log in again to this session, and we can talk about that later, how to log into the same session, you could go up and open your dashboard on a separate device. I have two screens and most of you could do that in a remote setting because you have your smart board and then you could drag it over if you have your uh, computer set to extend. So this might be something where you take a note, talk to your DLF or talk to somebody in your, your media coordinator or on your team. How do I change my computer and my smart board to extend? So actually have use of two separate screens. So you can see I'm going to slide this off. This is what extend does. I'm just going to put it over on my desktop. So now I've got the dashboard and I can see who's responding. And it allows me to control it from the dashboard or I can control it from this teacher presentation mode. Okay, so let's move forward. And at any time, if your kids were to get logged out, in the top right is the join code. So I'm gonna pause for just a second to make sure everybody's joined. And while I was talking, you were opening up a new tab. And I think Janet put in the chat or is going to, you should go to joinpd.com and type in this join code. A question that uh, is asked often is, if I close my screen, can the student still go to the Pear Deck? If it's on student pace, yes. You could start this, which is what we're doing today with teacher-led. You could turn it into a student-paced activity and then you could close your screen and they can continue to work on it at their own pace, which is perfect for remote learning and engagement. It allows you to get into that Zoom, answer the questions, get them started, and then let them go and work at their own pace. So again, I love the student paced option. And at any time, if you have another question, it's hard for me to see in the Zoom and you've experienced that too, you know, the way I've got it set up, I only see like four faces. So I'm not gonna see your hand raised. So make sure you put in the chat so I have a coworker, a partner. And make sure Janet, you jump in too. Janet is a master at Pear Deck, so ask her a question too, <laughs> do you want? All right, I'm gonna assume everyone's in. I'm gonna close this. If you're not in at any point, ask in the chat, what's the code? And notice how I can get that back to the top right. It's always gonna be in the top right of the slides. So let's go forward. Let me just show you one small um, trick, basically. If I just had Google Slides today and I wanted to make it interactive, and for whatever reason, my time got short yesterday. Imagine that, right? I didn't have enough time today. So what I can do, I know, I see Janet's expression. Thanks, Janet, she's smiling because we never have enough time today. So what I can do is I've got the slides from last year, and guess what? We're doing these. And um, so I'm going to go with them. I'm gonna start it in a Pear Deck, and I can then add the slides as I go. So for example, what is Pear Deck? Well, I'm gonna come over on the bottom of mine. So if you can see my screen in the Zoom, in the bottom right, it says new prompt. And again, if you can see my screen as a teacher, I can choose different templates that are here to go ahead and ask you a question right, right now. I didn't have to have that built. So I'm gonna go write a response well, I'll tell you what, let's see. Um, yep, yeah, I'm just gonna do that one. So now when I do that, it created the slide and I can just ask you the question. The question I wanna ask is, what is Pear Deck? What do you think Pear Deck is? Two or three words. Now I can see that a few people have started typing and I'm gonna go ahead because you're your teachers and show the responses. I don't know that I would recommend that with students because you, it's gonna show exactly what they're typing. So I'm also going to show you this. Here's my dashboard. Let me pop that back over. 
So see how I see what they're, what's happening? I can control some of these. So you've got these little, um, or I can leave feedback. These three dots, these are gonna allow me to hide it right now. I'm not sure I want that one to show, but maybe what I do want is I'm gonna click on the stars that I do want to show. So I can just go through again and work right now live. Again, think about this. If student paste is on, I can still be monitoring their work live while they're at home, but not in a Zoom. So, you know, let your mind kind of work with where we're going with the engagement and what would work well for you. All right, now that's the dashboard. I'm gonna pull that over. And it's probably not something you would show students, but what you can do when you're ready, bottom right, show responses. I can show the students responses and see how those are anonymous. So again, just some basic of how, basics of how Pear Deck works, a little refresher. Okay, I'm gonna go forward and let's say on this one, um, I'm just gonna have you actually look at, you know, um, another prompt so you can see what that looks like. I'm gonna come over and today I'm gonna have you just draw a picture and I want you to tell me how you're feeling. Anything, but we're still adults, right? So, <laughs> so how are you feeling? Good. Okay, so I'm seeing some good stuff going through there. It's given me just a pulse of, are you tired? Am I like flatline? What's it looking like for me today? So, uh, yay, good. I got a lot of, oh, I love that one. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, what I wanted to show with this one, we click show responses one more. In my top left, again, reviewing, I have different ways to look at the responses. So I can scroll down and just look at them sort of individually. If I wanna look at a lot of the individuals at one time, I can click the next option, which is a grid layout, right? I got a lot of this today. I've been in a lot of PLCs today <laughs> and we had some of this, right? And I love all these greats. This is good. This is the end of the day and you're hanging out for an hour. Now, one thing that's cool too though, is you can overlay. So overlay is kind of nice. You know, we have a great collage, but in this case, it, has, it shows us nothing. Maybe exactly how we're all really feeling, even though you're being polite. But um, it is a nice way when you have an issue or a problem and you can see where most of the kids, most of the data went. So you can kind of see what's happening there. All right, so I'm going to move out of what we call on the fly. And those are where I've just got slides. I just put them up and I start going with engagement. And now I'm gonna to move to slides that are teacher-led. So in the teacher-led ones, I've already put prompts in there for you. So I'm gonna go through a couple with you still. You have, you have prompts, but I'm still leading. I'm still changing the screen. So I'm still guiding the flow of the class. So this one, go ahead and put some names in and what you teach however you wanna put that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and show some responses so we can kind of see where we're at. And somebody asked about how they answer a question. Look at the bottom of your screen. You should see a little green box that says answer question. Notice some things too, uh, as you're seeing this. I love how someone's like, hey, I'm actually gonna like organize this. That's great. I'm gonna put some numbers in there. Perfect. It looks like we've got a variety of high school, elementary, middle school. Great. So again, if I wanna see a lot at once, I can hit the grid view. And since it wasn't a drawing activity, I don't have the option for the overlay. Now it's actually taking it a second to give me that grid because it's all coming in. I'm getting all of these, there we go. And so I really prefer grid view, uh, unless I'm trying to scaffold. So scaffolding a lesson is something else that we do. Um, when you are given a question and you see students in math, it was really important. I would see students doing problems differently and maybe a little more advanced um, than what we had been talking about. So I might start with a maybe an easier version of how they were solving. Maybe something we had just gone over. Then I might look at the different ways that other people had done that same problem. And so I might scaffold what's happening or kind of lay out 
how I want to show them. So then I might do the list view and I would star them on my dashboard and then I could just list the ones. All right, so this is again just a little bit of an overview. I'm going to go forward. On this example, you can drag a pin and there's a couple of examples just showing you that how these uh, draggables work. And I will show one thing on this one. I'm going to show responses on the draggables. It never, I mean, it, it, every single time I'll have people who figure out, oh, wait, I can go round and round in circles and it looks real, <laughs> it, it really messes with my teacher, right? So, um, what you can do is you can give a countdown. So what I would probably do on a draggable, I would hide responses. I would go over and on the lock screen. So again, if you can see my Zoom shared as the teacher and I click on lock screen and all of these are in the slides later if you wanna go like, I forgot what she did. You can set a timer. So I could set it for 30 seconds and 30 seconds it's gonna lock that screen. All right, so now I just lock the screens. I can just do it immediately too. And now I can show responses and I actually have them sitting where we can look at them and kind of talk about what the data is instead of having the live moving version. Okay, let's do another one teacher led. This is an example of where you can add in links. Um, I do want to note, and I don't know that we'll get to that. We were doing some tests today to make sure things worked. You can add a link in using the side right side add in paradigm bar where it says what can i do to the slide so you can add a link in which this one is done that way or if i had a set of google slides that i already had links built in those links still work so just so that you know that will my links work things that haven't worked as well have been transitions usually um like if i have a reveal. I have three answers and I just want the question up there on the slide and then I click and it kind of reveals, you know, a sequence of answers or steps. Those don't work well inside of the Google Slides. However, there's a PowerPoint integration and in the PowerPoint integration, if you're a PowerPoint fan, then those will work better. And so I have some of my teachers at the high school who are actually using the PowerPoint integration so that they can keep some of their built slides in those transitions. All right, so that took you to an outside link. So you might have a couple of tabs open now. So just want to kind of warn you there. Um, I'm going to move now to student pace. So if you want to go get back to the screen, however you're looking at it, so that you can see the Zoom screen where I'm sharing. In the right, bottom right of the teacher in, I can now turn on student pace. Now this is because I like the progression of this. I don't want you to see the question before I maybe talk about it or we have something. I usually prefer to start student led or add on the fly and then go into a student pace. But notice they put that at the very beginning as well. We could actually just choose that to begin with. So when I click turn on student paste, it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna do this? I'm gonna say, yes, I am sure. Notice on your screen in the bottom left, you've got arrows. So now you can move forward at your own pace. So if I choose to go forward now, I am no longer controlling your screen. So I'm gonna give you about three minutes to work through these slides. I'm gonna go forward to a slide where I'm gonna hang out and wait on you with a little bit of a timer. And if you have questions, put them in the chat. I can look at that and answer them. If our, you know, if I'm answering a question, like right now I'm talking while I'm giving you time to work, you can turn the sound down if that bothers you. But go ahead and work through these slides just to look at a couple of different examples of student paste. And I'm going to set our timer. So I'm going to pull us back together and um, I want to show you something. So I'm, I'm clicking them actually, and that's okay. I'm going to share my screen. It's, it's emails, but I want to show you why I'm actually in my email. So you can share this. So I just had something which always happens, you know, a lot of the time is it crashed. So while it crashed, but you guys were on student led, I could reopen that session. So I'm in my email, I could be in drive. I could be in any of the Google apps where in the top, right? I get my app waffle. 
and I'm going to go down to Pear Deck. And when I click on this, it's going to pull up the home, the home page for Pear Deck. I used to call it the dashboard, but that's not what it is because the dashboard is what you're watching on your session. When you click on this home piece, it's going to ask you to log in. And when you log in, you'll see what I'll give you a, a overview of. Again, this is probably one of the most asked questions is how do I get back to my sessions? Like if I've got it in a student paced mode, how do I go get to those? Especially if my computer crashes, my screen crashes or it closes. So notice that I'm logged in on the top right, shows my name, my email. This home page is a really nice page <laughs> that will give me the newest updates. So notice pop-up activities are something that we get because we have paid versions. But if you look at the top and click on sessions, then under sessions, you're going to have active and archived. And these got archived for me um, at a certain number of times. So I was like, where are all my sessions? And they are in the archive. So if you look at this and you're losing or you don't see some that you know you didn't archive, then go check that archived version. So I know that this screen might be a little small on your screen, but I'm just going to point out, I have a screenshot of this in the slides, and we'll give you those slides in just a minute. Right now, they are paired up for you, but I have a screenshot for this and some things to look for. First of all, on the home side, I went to sessions at the top. I'm in active, and now what I can do is look at the status. Which ones do I have on student pace, or which ones of my still the teacher live? I can also look and see, have I named it? Because what happens, and this is something to think about. Remember I said my Google Slides did not get changed. I started a session. That session could be unique for period one. Now I go back to those Google Slides and I start another session. And that session can be unique for period two. Then if I name them, and I'll show you where to name it, I can come and say, this was first periods that we started yesterday. And this was second periods that we started yesterday. So you can get these names. So naming it is very important if you're leaving it in the asynchronous version, student paste. The other thing is over to the right, and you'll have some arrows again that point to that. If I have ended a lesson, then when I click on more, more this little three dot more section, then I can come in and I can see data. If I haven't ended it, I'll just see the option to end it. So let's see if I've got one where I ended. Oh, here's one we can end. This is one that I think we were practicing with. So I would end this session. And now you can see I've got the different other, the different options of, I could name it if I forgot to name it. I can export my spreadsheet with data. And then again, we aren't going to look at takeaways, but basically what a takeaway does is it gives each student a copy of their own answers. So it's just wonderful. It's sort of like their own note sheet, their note guide. It puts it in Google Drive for them. It saves it, archives it for them. So there's a whole little video on takeaways where you can go and kind of watch how that works, but it's really as simple as turning it on. And then at the end of the session, when you end it, it gives them a copy. And what you might have to do is show them how to get to that copy in their drive. All right, so I'm gonna come back. So what I had to do when mine crashed, I had to come back and click on this to open it again. And when I click on it, there's a couple of things. I can just click on the name or I could click on this little presenter tab. So this is my presenter. And then this little icon is my teacher dashboard. So I can open both of those from here as well. So now I'm going to go back. Our time is up. I'm going to stop the student paste. And what we want to move into now is we want to move into letting you actually build and then practice presenting. So I've stopped student pace, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to end this for you. So I'm going to end this session. Notice here, that's where I can go ahead and I'm going to name this. So this was our digital learning PD, um, October 7th. I'm going to save and end this session. And real quickly, it had like a little publish takeaways. I clicked too soon, but that's where you can actually check that and you can publish those and it'll send them to the students. So now I'm back at my dashboard, and this is where I could come back in and look at that session again if I need to. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change to the slides, and I'd like to give you a copy of these slides so that we can build. 
So I'm going to go to slide 21. And if you want to type in this bit.ly, and I think Janet's going to put it in the chat for you. Yes. Then you can get a copy of these slides. And the reason that's nice is go ahead when what I like to do if I'm in a presentation, I like to pull up the slides and then I bookmark them. So go ahead and just, that's how I save them. So I've got it bookmarked. And then later I could come to it if I go back to it a lot and I use it, then I might go make my own copy and actually put it in my Google Drive where I can edit it and use it if I need. But again, I want you to have these slides so you can come back to these resources if you need them later. All right, at the top, I see a lot of people coming in, so that's great. Mama slides. And this is a good time for questions. Any questions so far? I did, again, want you to see the audio because the very first time that I got that audio, I clicked and clicked and clicked on the middle slide. And it is a little button at the bottom, so I'm glad you remember that, Janet. But then we also come back to that um, at the end to whoever had that issue. Maybe we'll pull your screen up and we'll look at that. All right, I'm gonna take just a few minutes. I'm gonna put this in present so that you can see it. So Google slide present. And I'm just gonna go forward to review just a couple of steps and then I'm gonna stop and give you some time to build. So first of all, this little slide has this wonderful little GIF, basically, that shows you how to look for that add-on and just a little overview. So if you want to come look at that later, you can come look at that. I pulled that from, there's lots of teacher resources on Pear Deck. Our job in a few minutes is going to create a slide. So you could do what I did at the beginning. You could start with a Google slide presentation you already have. Go ahead and pull that up. Make a copy of it if you're afraid you're going to edit it and, and you're, you need to use it. You're not real sure if you want to jump in with Pear Deck just yet. So make a copy of it. And then you can open up the Pear Deck add-on and just add some engagement pieces. Or your other option is to create a new Google slide, get the Pear Deck add-on, and just pull in templates and play with the templates. So that's what we're going to do in just a second. So I want to show you just some of the icons on the right. If you've already got a lesson created and you get the add-on, this image pops up on the right and over under ask the students a question, this is where you can choose some of the engagement pieces. This is where you can choose the draggables and change what icons those look like. So you might wanna play with that. Here are the different types of questions that you can add. If you actually wanna play with templates, then over to the right, You'll see it above. Let's see if I go back and show you if it had it right at the above. This, you'll click on that template library, and then you'll see all the different template folders. And they have continued to add to this. Notice the social emotional ones. These are, again, so nice to just pop in at the beginning of your lesson, even if you don't do any other engagement pieces in that Google slide except to start it. The whole castle three piece, right? To start it in the middle and at the end. And go ahead and add those in. And then the other big thing is look under subject areas. It's only showing a couple here, but if you scroll down, you'll see lots of other subject areas. And if you want to go play with the audio piece, there's a little video. I think it's like two minutes. So you can mute yourself and play that little video and see how to do that if you want and practice adding in. You can even record your own voice. So I'm now going to give us just a few minutes, like three and a half minutes. <laughs> maybe a little bit longer, I'll check in. But what you'd like to do, if you wanna minimize this, you can. If you wanna split screen, you can. But you wanna go and start either a new Google slide or pull up a slide presentation that you already have. You'll then click add-ons and look for the Pear Deck add-on. And if you have, yes. Sorry, no, do you no. mind um, just going to back to slides and show them from a slide deck how you would get the add-on yes. and add it in just one more time for people who it's very new for? Like this little piece here? Yes, ma'am, but will you actually go back into just a slide deck maybe that you have oh, in your Oh, slide? yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna stop presenting. That'll be, yes, well, yeah, that'll just be, help. yes, from there. Okay. All right, so this is my slideshow and I click, so you notice I don't have the Pear Deck option over to the right, but I have actually used it before. So, so if it's the first time, you'll want to go to add-ons 
and maybe get the ad on if you don't see it. Pear Deck should show up for you because we're paying for it for Buckingham County, so it really should go ahead and show up. And then you can say, open that Pear Deck add-on. If you already used it, you might be able to just click on this short at the top, Pear Deck, uh, it's how you get to it too. So once I click on that, open that Pear Deck add-on. Again, if it's the first time, you're gonna get a couple of pop-ups. And you're going to have to say sign in, authenticate with my DCS email. And you may need to do that a couple of times and it may take it just a second. I don't know if you saw the pop up screen um, when I was presenting a few minutes ago, the dashboard, but it popped up from Paradigm going, hey, we're experiencing high traffic. Um, so sometimes it gets a little slow, but that's the most I've seen is that little pause. I usually don't have a problem with this website at all hanging up. Okay, so now that I have it open to the right, this is my template library. If I want to just start adding to what I've already got from templates, or here are the options that I can go and click on. And let's say I put a draggable. You'll see it takes a second and I can use this drop down and choose. Uh, there's lots of different options that I can go through and choose from. So I might choose a building and I can choose color. I could add two. So if the, that one where it had multiple colored fish, that one, if it wasn't showing up, maybe somehow this got deleted because you can delete some of your content. So I chose a different house and I say update my slide. And at the bottom, notice how it has the students drag the icons. If I remove that bar, I really take away the interactive piece to it. So just be real careful when you're editing your slides, if you've added it, or you might need to start over and add it again. If you've been watching on YouTube, I would suggest that you go ahead and create a Pear Deck activity, creating at least two interactive slides, and then present it with a colleague to practice using your dashboard, teacher dashboard, where you can see student answers and the display screen for a Pear Deck screen. Remember, you take the same Google slide and click the Start Lesson to create new sessions of that same slide. You can also use the three dots in the bottom right of your session to find your teacher dashboard and present screen. You can click show responses to show student responses, set a timer, and also create questions on the fly. Use the three dots to turn on or off student paste mode and end your session. If you will go ahead and stop sharing. I'm gonna make sure everybody has this My Learning Plan link. Um, I do want to open up that chat for any kind of questions that you may have. And I quickly wanna say, I have a few people I think out there that are um, Canvas users, but if you are Canvas, if you're Google Classroom, if you are just New Zella, New ZLA, then what you want to do is check out these extra slides. So I'm gonna go down to 49. Um, these are slides with a link that will show you the integration. If you have trouble with one of those integrations, please email us, let us work with you on that. That's what we do, or email your DLF. Um, Janet and I are happy to help you too. And then at the very end, there are some resources. So my people who are just kind of doing a, I need to just make sure I, I still know what I'm doing. And I still wanna maybe go get certification, my advanced users. Um, this one, sorry. The certification where you can be an inspirational educator. I just want to show that. All right, in the chat, we are putting the My Learning Plan link for you. And um, if you have any questions, please hang out and we can troubleshoot. And I'm welcome to let you share your screen and just chat with me too. Thank you guys. You're welcome. It's good to see everyone. Thanks for coming.